today I'm going to be showing you how to make my spicy squash and black bean burgers, which are veggie burgers with a difference because I feel like some veggie burgers just aren't delicious and these really are. They're sweet, they're hearty and they're salty. So really yummy and super good for you too. So what we need for the base of the burger is black beans, squash and sweet corn and lots of spices. So we use lots of salt and pepper obviously. We've got chili flakes, oregano and then some cumin as well. So for the bun, because I don't eat gluten, and I think it's really nice to pack even more veggies into your meal, we're using portobello mushrooms as the cap of our burger. They're really yummy when cooked right, and just another great way to pack the veggies in. So we're gonna cook these as well. We're gonna start by making the burger. So we're gonna peel and keep the squash, and then put it in the oven that's already preheated at around 190 degrees Celsius, with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt too. Okay, so now we're gonna peel the butternut squash we only need half the squash, so you can maybe roast the whole thing and then just keep it for lunches on the go during the week. Perfect, so we've peeled the squash and now we're just gonna cut it. You want a really, really sharp knife for this, the sharper the better and you won't hurt yourself. So we really just need half. And just go down the middle. Just keep going. In nice chunks so that when we mash them eventually, We've got quite a lot of the heart inside, not just the crispy outer. You can, if they're too chunky, just cut a little bit more. Perfect, so we're just going to chuck these onto the roasting tray. And I just drizzled a tiny bit of olive oil on the base as well, just to make sure that they don't stick straight away. And then I'm going to drizzle a little bit more on top, and just a little bit of salt as well. Perfect, I'm just going to toss it with my hands a little bit. Get them really oily. Beautiful. So I'm going to put this in the preheated oven, which is at 190 degrees Celsius, for around 30 to 40 minutes until really soft and caramelised. So while the squash is still cooking, we're going to caramelise an onion. So we want a red onion, and then you're just going to cut it into small-ish pieces. And then we're just going to put it on the oven top and, you know, make it until it's really nice and caramelised and soft. Try not to cry. Perfect. So we're going to take this over to the oven. Okay, so now we're going to add all the ingredients to the bowl and then we're going to just make the oat flour by grinding some oats down. So we're going to add the black beans first. I've just drained these, rinsed them so they don't have the real beany water around them. I'm just going to add them in. That's about 400 grams, so a good cup and a quarter. And then we're just going to start mashing this before we add the other ingredients. So basically before we add the squash, we basically want about half of the beans already mashed into a puree and then the other half still kind of whole. So this is what it should look like before the squash goes into. So we're just going to chuck that in. I roasted it for about 40 minutes. Feels so caramelised and just delicious. So add this in and then just going to mash that in too. Should be pretty easy because they're really soft now. Now we're going to add in about a cup of sweet corn. So I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm going to say that around that much is a cup. And then we're going to add in our caramelised onions that we just cut push those into and then we're going to add in the seasonings so we're going to want two teaspoons of cumin so just going to add that in be generous with cumin because it's such a great spice we're going to want two of oregano one. and then we're just going to get one thing of the chili as well so I'm just going to screw this you want to make sure before you use chili flakes that you really know how strong the flakes are you don't want to be hit by an overwhelming amount of spice we're going to use around so I'm just going to test it. Perfect. So a teaspoon is going to be great in this. So then we're just going to combine all of this. Mmm. Smells so good. It smells like Morocco cumin. It reminds me of the trip I took there. It just smells so good and so fresh and spicy. Yum. We pair these burgers with hummus as well before we put the mushroom buns on. And I think that's why it goes so well, is because in hummus there's also cumin and there's chickpeas. And it is very Moroccan-y actually, I've never really thought about it, but it's quite a Moroccan burger. It's pretty sloppy. We want to bind it and that's why we're going to make the oat flour. So this is just a great gluten-free flour that's almost a breadcrumb. And that's really what I was trying to go for, because you add breadcrumbs to burgers and that's not gluten-free. And the gluten-free ones are delicious. So we're just going to add a cup of these to the blender, grind them down and add them in just to bind the burger all up. And we need a cup. And then we're just going to put the lid on, grind them into their kind of a breadcrumb consistency, so not a flour, kind of crummy, uh, still got a little bit of texture to it. 
<laughs> so we've got the breadcrumbs, or the oat crumbs as I should say, and then what we're just going to do is we're going to just chuck them in. And then we're just going to fold it so it starts to bind and make the mixture a little bit more dry so we can put them together and they're held in a really nice burger shape. Now this is how you test that you have enough, is that you just want to be able to move them between your palms without it being too soggy. Um, and this is probably the perfect amount. I could use a little bit more, I can kind of tell, but they're holding together really nicely without me having to, you know, smush them together. Probably around six to eight burgers, depending how big I want them. You can also make them really small and make them kind of this size and make them into little appetizers. So it depends if you're going to have it for a main or an appetizer. Today we're going to make them the main, just making sure that they're really round and perfect to kind of put over the oven and cook on each side. So we've made six burgers. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep, six. <laughs> and we're gonna make some portobello buns to go along with that. So I think we've got 12 here, which is perfect, so one each side. So literally all you need to do is you're just gonna line these around the place on your baking tray. Add a little bit of salt for some seasoning. Um, and then we just need a little bit of olive oil, just a tad, just to bring out all the natural juices. We're gonna put these in the oven that's already been preheated for us at 190 degrees Celsius. This is gonna go in for around 20, 25 minutes until they're really nice and cooked and juicy mushrooms while we make these on the oven top. So let's get going. So we've got them out of the oven and they're looking really, really lovely. I pick it up, but I'm gonna burn my hand. The burgers have kind of been in there probably for about 25 minutes after we cooked them on the stove, flipped them over to make sure they were coated and crisp, put them in the oven for around 25 minutes. Also got the portobello mushrooms, so all that's left is to stack them up and then add all the ingredients you want inside. So you're gonna add the portobello mushroom, one of the nice burgers, a little dollop of hummus, and then another mushroom cap. Then we just do that the whole time. So there we go, these delicious spicy squash and black bean burgers in a portobello bun. They're so cute and just so yummy, so I really hope you guys love this recipe. Thanks to my dogs for probably making a million and one cameos in this video and distracting you from the actual thing you're supposed to be watching. But I hope you guys love the video anyways, and I'll see you guys here next time.